Um, I've only just recently heard some news that uh, Councillor Green, our chair, um, won't be able to make the meeting this evening. There's been a family bereavement. So, uh, in the absence of the vice chair as well, um, we're going to have to elect a, or appoint a chair for the for the meeting for this evening. So, um, members, if you could please have nominations. Yes, thank you. I would like to nominate Councillor Wendy Clements as chair of this meeting. Uh, do I I'll have any other nominations? There's a second of there. Can we have a second? Yeah. All those in favour? <laughs> so, no other nominations? Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I have to call for if there are any others. Uh, so no other nominations. No, no uh, nominations. Show of hands, please. Those in favour? Uh, any against? Any abstentions? Thanks, Matthew. No. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. As you may have noticed, my name is Wendy Clements. I'm a councillor in Greensby, Frankly, and Irving. Um, we do have some apologies for absence. Uh, we have Councillor Louise Rees Jones and Councillor Whittingham. And um, you may or may not be aware that Councillor John Hale resigned as a councillor, effective from the 12th of March. So he was our vice chair and that's why we've just uh, been going through a little process to get to this point. So, Members Code of Conduct, are there any declarations of interest, Members? We need to formally record Councillor Jack Green if we have some. I beg your pardon, of course we do, yes. Yeah. Uh, the Chair, can I just note that um, Councillor Phil Brightmore said he's running late. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving then to Members' Code of Conduct, are there any declarations of interest? Okay. Minutes. Would the committee like to please approve the accuracy of the minutes of the meeting held on Thursday, the 5th of October? Yes, please, Chair. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, so then we have a constituency manager update. Um, I've got a written statement by the West World constituency manager that I'd like to read out on her behalf. Key achievements in respect of projects funded by the constituency committee since the last meeting in October 2017 include the completion of work on the second memorial garden on Hull Road by Flora Shepherd. Broadway using community fund underspending up to Maud. The garden will be officially opened at 1pm on Monday the 19th of March to mark the improvements that has taken place and the Princess Trust will be presented with certificates of achievement by Flourish for all their help with this project. Another project called the Little Brothers, um, funded by the constituency committee through its ASB budget has been awarded the High Sheriff of Merseyside Award in recognition of great and valuable services to the community. The initiative has also been awarded a certificate from National Crime Beat, commending their outstanding contribution to helping reduce crime and creating a safer community. Little Brothers and Little Sisters was established two years ago and it helps Year 5 and 6 pupils in an attempt to reduce the chances of becoming involved in antisocial behaviour and early criminal activity. A number of projects funded in Pensby and Thingwall Ward using the remaining community fund for this area have been Holidays at Home, a group which supports people within the community aged 60 plus who may be socially isolated while other groups have closed for the summer holidays. The group provide company, support and help to meet other like-minded people in the community. Carmore Luncheon Group, the group provides a meeting place one day a week 50 weeks a year for elderly people to socialise, enjoy a hot meal and to have a much needed change of environment. The funding pays for singers, speakers and musicians to come along and entertain the members once a month. Pensby Library Volunteers aims to promote enjoyment of reading and easy access to books as well as enhance the use of Pensby Library within the community. So far, 42 community funded projects have been completed from the last round of funding and a number of projects have been given extensions. These include Greasby Community Association Traffic and Heritage Team, Wirral Festival of Fair, Carers Get Together, 
hype, helping young people everywhere. Friends of Grange Community Park. Warden dispense items of note. West Kirby and Thurston and Hoylake and Mel's West Kirby drop-in. The group was set up to help those with any degree of mental health, providing somewhere to go with other people to be accepted and interact with others. The constituency engagement officer has also worked hard to support the Love Where You Live initiative, with local hubs now having equipment on hand for use for litter picking groups. The West Kirby group, the High Tiders, are going from strength to strength and are working closely with the council to shape future approaches, i.e. Um, reducing single-use plastics. Thank you very much. I believe we also have Sergeant Bradley here from Merseyside Police. Uh, yes, sir. You've got a, an update for us about burglaries? Uh, I have, yes, sir. Uh, I'm a police officer from uh, now, which uh, covers the west side of the road, so the walls are sort of um, Egremont, Watson, East Garth, Morton. Can you speak? 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 There's a microphone in the middle here if you'd like to come to it. Might be easier for us to hear you. <laughs> Just pretend you're arresting someone. Just turn around with it or? Yeah. I'll move over here so I'm on the stand of 21's back. Uh, yep, yeah, basically we, I cover the uh, the wards up, up to as far as sort of ends be here. Um, I mean, for the walls that I cover, really, um, I can only sort of give you good news, generally. Um, there's been no sort of specific hot spot that we've identified, but um, one of the problems we have suffered from uh, is burglary, specifically, uh, which would appear to be sort of uh, being targeted at you know, our premises that have high-value vehicles, um, such as that can be used to get away from the place or evade the place, etc. Uh, I mean, generally, some of the advice that we give is some of the advice you know, that we give previously, that we've put on social media. And again, it, it's always keep your valuables out of sight, um, keep your windows and doors locked. It's just reiterating really those important points uh, and that advice. Um, you may have seen some uh, items on the news where um, I think nationally some transponders are being used um, as a bit of a sort of go-between. You may lock your vehicle in the house secure, however, uh, where you put your, your keys or where you keep your keys in your house, there is a device which is out there that could sort of um, strengthen that signal and somebody could take your vehicle potentially. That has happened elsewhere in the country but we're not seeing that here uh, at all. Uh, whilst I do refer to that um, there has been some burglaries and some, uh, some vehicles taken, I can report some good news where offenders who have taken those cars have been arrested. Uh, as you may or may not have seen, Operation Castle has been launched by Merseyside Police in the past two weeks. Uh, as a force-wide response to burglary dwellings. Uh, now that is um, sort of reiterating some of the actions that we've you know, previously and naturally do uh, as a recourse of sort of burglary dwellings anyway. But if I may just give you some good news of, uh, of some similar jobs. Uh, following a report of a bur burglary in Newton, DNA was recovered um, from that address uh, and the offender has been arrested and charged with burglary dwelling uh, to attend court for sentencing in two weeks. He's likely to receive a custodial sentence. Uh, another offender, a high vehicle, a uh, high value vehicle was taken. Uh, it's made off um, from that address, however, the male has been, uh, was, was basically seen as sussurps within the vehicle in a supermarket car park. Um, it, that, that come by a, a member of the public reporting suspicious circumstances. So again, as well as reiterating the advice of keeping your windows, doors locked, any suspicious behaviour, no matter how trivial you, you, may, you, know, you may think it is, Although we are sort of, um, you know, there is less of us nowadays, we will still look into that. That still needs to um, be looked into. I can only reiterate um, sort of the advice from me and my officers are covering those areas really is to report that any suspicious behaviour in. Um, because naturally, what these people do, um, you know, they'll, they'll work during the hours of darkness or daylight, um, but they won't, you know, they'll previously go and look naturally at an address before they go in you know, commit a crime at that, at that location really. That's the pattern we're, that we're sort of seeing. Uh, there's been four offenders been identified, again, from uh, another high value vehicle uh, that was taken, uh, following a pursuit, um, again, involving the force helicopter and dog officers. Four males were arrested, you may have seen that in the local news in, the, uh, in one of the tunnels on Merseyside. Uh, they've been remanded and are in police custody at the moment. 
uh, for court. Uh, there's another two um, offenders that have been identified for robbery as part of that offence as well. Um, Following a, a burglary warrant, we've received some information. Again, this has come from the community. A warrant has been executed and three offenders have been identified and arrested for a burglary in property that's been taken from burglaries has been recovered. Again, this has all been community intelligence. So again, I can only reiterate the importance of um, you know reporting stuff into us. We can't act alone. We have to act upon the information that's provided to us for the uh, for the means that we obviously get it by crime stoppers or, whatever, or any other means. Um, there's been some good work in one of the offenders um, linked to uh, a series of quiz through crime on our hub. Uh, we've uh, managed to get a closure order working in conjunction with the antisocial behaviour team uh, and he's been basically evicted from his home address um, in Seacom, uh, which is one of the methods that we use to uh, target and disrupt any offenders that we do. Um, specifically in this location, uh, predominantly uh, what we see is uh, this location and the sort of surrounding areas of the likes of West Kirby, uh, bogus official type burglaries where um, naturally the population is probably um, is probably more more elderly type people in these areas. So because of that, they're getting targeted due to their vulnerabilities. We've done a, a drink trading standards operation within that area, um, mainly targeting um, doctor surgeries, the likes of Sainsbury's in Upton. Um, Morrison's and West Kirby, um, where we've been able to encourage and offer advice to prevent people becoming victims of fraud uh, and offer any bogus official or cold call advice to the home address, um, really. So, in overall, um, it's, it's a sort of, you know, not an excellent picture, but it's a good picture at the moment. Um, can I ask any questions? Yes, um, if I may, um, West Kirby and Thurston Ward that I represent. There have been a few problems in the vicinity of Ashton Park. You're probably aware of those where vehicles have been broken into, vehicles have actually been pushed over apparently. Yeah. And I did get a briefing from one of your inspectors who told me that this was being dealt with and I'm pleased to hear that. Yeah. Have you got any update on that at all? I gather four, four offenders have been identified and they're in the process of being dealt with. Are you in a position to just update yeah. us on that? Because it is a great concern to people living yeah. in the Ashton Park area, particularly the houses around that area, um, Church Road and um, uh, Carpenter's Lane, Carpenters Lane and yeah. Bridge Street. If you could just give us an update on that very um, briefly. Yeah, that's um, it's still ongoing. However, um, for the work that our officers have done, um, this is uh, a period of criminal damage which has happened over a confined, yeah. very small period of time, just before bonfire night. Mm -hmm. Uh, mischief night um, where a number of wing wearers have kicked off vehicles. Uh, the offenders have been identified through our officers going into the schools um, whereby they've been identified, they've been dealt with and at the moment um, they're awaiting um, a sort of um, disposal as it were of our youth offending services where they make an assessment of them prior to any sort of uh, possible future outcome. Um, so as and when that happens I'm sure you'll be sort of updated either by myself or our inspector. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mike Sullivan. Thank you, Chair. Is it on? Uh, thanks, Sergeant. Thanks for the, um, for the excellent report. <coughs> we in Pensby and, and Thingwall had, my colleague and I, Phil Brightmore, had a, had a meeting before Christmas with your colleagues in the Hope Centre. Um, it was well attended by yourselves but it was poorly attended by the public. So that's a dig at everyone here that keep an eye on the leaflets and please come to these meetings because they are important. Um, now we were given a picture around here, this specific area, where crime is very low. I'm trying to put in, in, into context what you said there. I think he gave us a picture of the whole of the Wirral. Yeah. Um, what's the crime rate in, in, this, in Wirral West? Uh, because that's where we are, and particularly Pensby and Thingwall. Mm -hmm. Because my view is that crime is very low in this part of, of the world compared to other, other areas. So could you just comment about overall what percentage... We don't want people leaving here thinking that this car's going to be stolen off the path and yeah. they're going to get burgled in West Kirby. So in context with the whole of the world, yeah. what is the 
percentages because I, I personally think we're living in a safe area. Yeah, no, um, I, I can only sort of uh, concur with that really. I mean, um, you, you probably never uh, speak to a policeman who will paint a, a good picture um, because naturally we, we mop up the other side of, of things. But um, where West is, is a safe place to, to live, uh, relatively uh, low, very low crime rate. Um, you know, um, I, I, you know, I'm quite happy. I, I've got family living here. I live here, so um, <coughs> I, I wouldn't paint a picture of otherwise, really, if it wasn't. Um, you know, naturally, there is other areas of Merseyside that will suffer naturally differently, and there will be uh, a short, you know, period of time where there'll be hot spots in a in an area. We'll address that or look at addressing that area, and naturally. Um, sometimes it may move to a different area, but um, Wirral West is a, you know, a, the general overview I'll give you there is, is generally for the Wirral and the West. Um, however, um, in and around obviously your constituency it is very low. Um, whilst the would reiterate there is um, public attendance at, at a meeting, um, I, I can only reiterate as well that we do hold surgeries in the communities. Um, Obviously, that gets advertised by ourselves on social media, um, and likewise, I can only encourage really those to be advertised and encourage the public to come and report any issues to us. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Chair. Councillor David Burgess, Thank you very much, Sergeant. Um, getting back to burglaries, because obviously that, that is pretty um, pretty heavyweight stuff. But you talk about distraction burglaries, particularly in West Kirby, because of the elderly population. But are there any aggravated circumstances, any of those burglaries that you're aware of, and at the present moment, uh, are there any hot spots in Little West that you feel uh, your officers are obviously clearly going to, without giving the game away, um, are, are targeting at the moment that are particularly bad for, for Berkeley? Yeah, no, there's no, um, there's no identified sort of hot spots. The only thing I would say is, I mean, going back to sort of um, uh, suspicious circumstances earlier in the day, there's been some occasions where there'll be a cold caller potentially at an address. Um, where they use that opportunity to have a quick look into a hallway, see where keys are kept. Uh, generally, you know, if you like, uh, if you like my mum, you keep your purse or your handbag in the hallway, um, and they use that opportunity to get a very quick um, snapshot of setup of your house, what door you've got, do you have a dog, etc., etc. But um, I mean, the only thing I can reiterate there is, is simple advice: don't leave your keys within view of the hallway. Um, you know, uh, don't answer cold callers. If you've got a little peephole, you know, have a little look out. Do you know that person? Um, again, it, it's all sort of practical advice, really, which, uh, uh, you know, would go to assist the, the occupier and, and ourselves as well. But uh, in relation to any sort of defined hotspots, uh, no. Thank you. Thank you. Last question, Councillor Tony Smith. Okay, thank you. Um, on Tuesday evening, we had a meeting in Upton in regard to antisocial behaviour with your colleague Al Morris and uh, now 40 people actually attended that meeting. Um, what I would want to say, since January, certainly in the, where I live, around Manor Drive, South Drive and all that area, West Drive, Church Road and all that, there's been numerous burglaries, cars taken from outside houses and that, which <coughs> your colleagues are all aware of and have been in contact constantly with Paul Harrison and that. I mean, it's just unbelievable. We've never had anything like this in the past. Um, the meeting last night was, was really, really good. I must say, what came across to me very much was the lack of communication between everyone, really. Um, but there's also, people were fearful of what had happened. They were actually talking about bringing in private people to look after their streets and roads, which I don't know, we don't do that. I think what came across to me very much was that, um, you know, you are really stretched. You know, you're, you and your colleagues are really stretched. And particularly when people go off and leave, and also people are being brought in from other areas, you know, whether it's from Liverpool or that, they don't actually know the area. Now, your colleagues who work in the area do, but they're being pulled, for example, in that tunnel incident, everyone was pulled into that. So, you know, cars were, were being burnt, or houses were being burgled, cars are being smashed in, 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 in Church Road and, and, and that. 
I just want you to comment about, <coughs> have you got sufficient people to actually cover World West? Um, I think, well, personally, um, you'd always probably like more people. Um, I would say sufficiently, we, we have uh, sufficient staff to cover. Um, obviously, things you mentioned there, there is restrictions on how many staff can, can be offered at a certain point of time. Um, however, due to um, you know things of the reduction in the areas, it's still the same that we've got to cover. Um, we we have to sort of be clever with what we do and prioritise things around threat, harm, and risk, uh, which has sort of been well publicised, um, not by myself, but uh, you know by another colleague previously before me. Um, you know, whilst we're not neglecting other areas, we we have to prioritise around the what is that at that moment in time the threat, harm, and risk. Um, <coughs> Sadly, that's you know beyond my scope or my control really. But you know, I, I'm I'm quite happy with the officers and the number of staff that I have um, to come on duty. But you know, naturally, you'd always want more. Um, but you know, I, I don't feel that that prevents me doing my job. Okay, thanks very much indeed for your time and for uh, answering all the questions. That's great. I'm very conscious that we've got a lot of things on the agenda tonight. So if we move on. Um, then we come to an update on the neighbourhood review of Rachel Musgrave. Oh, there you are. I'm going to do a bit of a double up, if that's okay. Oh, okay. Um, it's together in Birkenhead Constituency Committee, and then I've missed the last two, so they were probably much better. Um, but then return here, thank you. And can everyone hear me using the mic? I can hear myself, so you certainly can. Um, so, we are conducting currently a review into the constituency committees and our working in neighbourhoods. Um, and we feel, if we go to the first slide, because it's quite, quite useful, uh, prompt anyway, thank you. Um, we feel it's really important that we're working um, with our residents and being guided by our residents because the more empowered um, everybody that lives across the world um, feels and is, I think the better the services. Um, that we can provide um, a better way forward for us. <coughs> In terms of why this is particularly important for us, there are some sort of national surveys here that show that a vast majority of residents feel their local area will always be improved from greater input from residents. And I, I've never been to one meeting where someone says I disagree with that. So how, how it's only 97%, I don't know. I'd love to be one of the 3%. Um, over half of residents have identified working closely with residents as the best possible solution to the current and the funding problems that we've got at the council um, and I think again um, elected members would agree with that whether we were in a, in a good financial situation or, a, or a, um, a desperate one I think we always need to be working closely with our residents um, yeah, I thought it was really concerning and disappointing that over half of rural residents didn't feel that they could influence decisions affecting their area um, and I think that's something that we really have to address and so that's one of the things we'll be looking at um, that we are looking at rather as part of this review um, and finally another reason why this is important is World Council has 20 um, pledges for 2020 and um, there are various action points under, under a lot of these very grand statements so they've, they've broken down to various action points and three quarters of those actions require us to be working in our neighbourhoods um, and so finding a model that works for people um, and, and works in community groups is really important for us. So I, um, and then after this you'll be delighted to know I get to hand over to Rachel so I get to listen, um, but I um, in the summer of last year asked Rachel and her team to lead a review into how our neighbourhood working currently operates and um, we have, obviously not here tonight, but we have Jane Morgan um, as our constituency uh, committee manager, so she manages all, all of Wirral West um, with Helen Gallagher supporting her and they, they do a really great job. Um, but we were looking to find out what the other models of neighbourhood working look like across the country and um, whether we could put any value on the, on the social value of the investments that are made through this committee. Um, each of the wards has access to £10,000 and um, we run small grant programmes for community groups to bid in. And so I wanted to get an idea of just how valuable that had been. Um, and then, most importantly, um, was the views of our community groups, uh, networks, staff, um, partners and elected members to identify opportunities <coughs> of how we could better deliver the world plan and how we could better work with our community groups. Um, that work's been already fairly um, extensive and quite intensive. 
and I'm ever so grateful to Rachel and her team for um, spending an awful lot of time. I think with all members should feel they've had a good opportunity to engage. Um, they've, we've come to constituency committees. Um, it, messages have gone out, and I think there's there's still work to be done. Um, and the update and purpose of tonight um, is as much to give you a, an overview and a flavour of, of what's been happening, um, but it's also if there are um, additional ideas, it's to kind of reassure everybody that. This is not going to be a cemented, fixed, final position. That once we determine a, a a model going forward, whether it's this with a tweak or whether it's something different, once that's been determined, I think in two years' time we need to still be learning and we still need to be evaluating, and so we'll commit to doing that. Um, I'm going to hand over to Rachel for this for the next few slides. Okay, thanks. Sorry, can everyone just see me now and move out of the way? Um, and thank you to everyone who's been involved in this piece of work. As Matthew said, we've done quite um, a, a range of pieces and had lots of involvement. And I know many people sat around the table have, have helped us with that. Um, so the first piece of work we undertook was a desk-based exercise looking at the evidence um, around research models for how people work in neighbourhoods across the country and internationally. And I think you won't be surprised to hear that the way that people define neighbourhoods is different all over the place. And what we saw from that piece of work was that, um, obviously, across the country, councils and their partners um, operate very many different ways of working in, in a neighbourhood or community model. Um, we also determined that there were no formally evaluated models, so there wasn't a, a model that anyone said was better than anyone else. Um, it was usually a mixture of things that were thought to be successful and worked for that local area. And you can see, and you can all read that, so I won't repeat it, but there were both success factors that determined from this piece of work and um, aspects that were determined to be challenging in terms of how um, councils and their partners could work with local people. Um, and finally, I think the overriding message was that more recently, I think there has been much more of a move in terms of the way... Um, public services and local areas are working together towards a more engagement relationship approach away from sort of a, a service model approach. So that was the piece of work. The second piece of work we undertook was, as Matthew said, we looked at the social return on investments for um, all the funding that had gone into each constituency committee across Wirral. So for those of you who don't know, each committee is allocated £50,000 each year to undertake and um, grow projects in local communities responding to the needs of local residents. So we looked at that funding for the period 2013 to 2017 and as you can see just um, nearly £600,000 has been spent and um, in those different areas you'll see there's different numbers of um, projects that have happened so um, in this one 191 projects have taken place during that period and that's because as Matthew says um, the models that the com committees have established across Wirral all vary, so the decision of this committee, as you know, is to distribute small grant funding to seed smaller projects. So for that reason, that made it quite difficult for us to assess the social return on investment for these projects because they're all under £1,000, so the methodology didn't entirely work for those. Um, but what we did find from that was overall across Wirral, <laughs> there was a, return, a social return on investment of £2.68 for every £1 spent. And that varied across the project. So you'll see um, for Wirral South, for example, they had 19 projects. And what they, tended, what they tended to do with their commissioning is purchase small projects um, that they buy over time. Um, and some of their returns on investment we could calculate better, but that wasn't, wasn't necessarily because they were better projects. It was just that there was some evidence about the return on investment for those. Um, and finally, uh, the recommendations from that piece of work were that we continue to evaluate the projects that come through the committees and look at ways of how we can um, establish and sustain those centrally. So just to give you a flavour, I have just put up one slide there that shows the um, differences in spend across the four committees. Um, I think this report particularly commended the way in which this committee had um, distributed its funding in terms of citizen involvement. So actually putting the projects out to a vote was, was noted to be a particularly innovative and a different way of engaging local people. Um, yeah, as it says at the bottom there. Okay, thanks, Matthew. And finally, the last sort of piece of work that we did, that is, as Matthew rightly says, is ongoing, is um, we 
undertook a series of, of insights. So um, these range from one-to-one -one interviews with you know, chairs of each of the committees, um, staff working in uh, the constituency teams, uh, partner organisations, our staff in the council and other partners. Um, our, we, we held a series of community events, we talked to elected members, a whole range of insight um, events. And these are really a summary of the highlights that we got from that piece of work. And it was quite extensive, but these are the highlights. Um, so as you will not be surprised to hear, collaborating with local people and working together in partnership was absolutely um, identified as being highly valued and the only really best way forward. And there were a number of projects cited, some of which you may be familiar with. So things like litter picks, door knocks, um, the Eastern Connect projects were specifically mentioned. Um, as we all know, and I'm from the Wirral, born and bred, Wirral's a very diverse place, so there was no sort of kind of one size fits all approach and a very um, a desire to see much more local focus. Um, and, and as part of that, a kind of a recognition that there was a need for better use of existing networks. So there's already a lot of stuff happening in local communities, so how does that better connect to each other and how do we better connect to those groups as well? Um, for a variety of reasons, um, the actual committee meetings themselves were not seen as um, a particularly good engaging, uh, a good way of engaging with local people. Clearly tonight we've got a, a fantastic audience, um, but that isn't always the case across Wirral. Um, and for, for other reasons, the actual meetings themselves were not seen to be ideal. And that came from a whole range of stakeholders. Um, you also won't be surprised to hear, and it kind of reflects what we found from the social return on investment, that seed funding, and by that I mean some small pots of money to get things going, oil in the wheels, was found to be highly valued by all stakeholders, so actually got community action happening. Um, in addition to that, it wasn't all about money, so there was messages from community groups saying, actually, leave us alone, we can get on with this. Sometimes we just need you to just get out the way or unblock some barriers or give us some advice about how we can bring in external funding. So it wasn't just um, that small amount of money. And it's important to recognise that, as Matthew said, um, the dedicated offer of support from the constituency teams was particularly valued by elected members in terms of unblocking some of those barriers and making things happen in local communities. Um, from community stakeholders, we also heard a strong message about the need for community builders, so people to connect um, groups together, forums together, provide some support and peer networks. And finally, um, during the summer was when we undertook the research and I think it's important to say that we did get some feedback that showed that obviously there was some work to do in terms of the relationships with local people, so there was some tension um, between public services and residents and also some apathy around the political system as well, it's fair to say. So those are the three pieces of work. I'll hand back over to Matthew. Um, thank you. Thanks Rachel. Um, I think it's a really useful update. Um, we've got next steps which I'll just talk through, um, which is the feedback and engagement we're doing throughout the constituency committee, and this evening is the final of those meetings. Um, there'll be a report uh, then coming to Cabinet um, shortly after that, um, and then we'll continue to work with the Royal Partnership. I just wanted to touch upon something, because I've been through this review for the last seven or eight months, and obviously we've yet to confirm decisions and we've yet to have a, a report to, that brings all of this together but clearly you can get a feel for what works and what doesn't and I guess on some level to provide hopefully some reassurance to our to our residents and to our officers and to our councillors here is to say I actually think there is there is some benefit to these meetings but I'm also really aware that what we're doing in Wirral West for instance meeting every few months um, is on in my area alone in Upton, um, we've got Woodchurch, Overchurch, and Upton Village, just like a three component parts of one single ward. Um, and even within them, there's various subsets. I'm sure we could we could break down, but because of the nature of this, having to go to each of the different wards around the constituency, the chances that we get back to the Woodchurch or to the Overchurch in my area are very slim for years. And same for parts of Pensby or West Kirby, Hoylake or Greasby. And so what I'm really keen to do is to retain some of the benefits of bringing the meetings together like this, but also to recognise that there are brilliant, there's brilliant work going on in each of your communities. There are community groups, residence groups, things happening non-stop. 
And I don't think it's always fair for us to say, well, you come here, you listen to us sit on the top table, you listen to us speak and hold the microphone. I think it's actually, there'll be real benefit for quite often us going out to the community groups and having a small slot and hearing more directly what people think. So I just wanted to give it a quick steer then some of the thinking. Um, and I think the last thing is any questions? How do, you, how do you make 160 percent profit? How do you, how do you relate? Speed one pa sorry, sorry, I beg your pardon. <laughs> peace, peace out. Um, how do you relate one pound invested to two pounds sixty eight returned? Because, so, so, so I would very much like to invest <laughs> in that business. <laughs> so, so how do you make the judgment that whatever you do is worth two pound? So, so in, if you want detailed methodology, I can definitely hand over to Rachel, which would be, which would be better. Like the detailed methodology, detailed methodology yeah. and, and your investment fund, I'm sure. Um, yeah, okay, because it's all about what value ultimately you bring to an area. And if you might make, for an example, you might say, well, introducing flower beds to a village um, actually increased some of the economic generation of the area. It might have brought more money into the shops, might have made people feel a bit prouder and better about their area. But... For a less politician answer and a more, more methodology answer, let me hand over to Rachel. Methodology. Okay, yes. so um, I can, prob yes. I can probably um, talk you through afterwards because it's quite lengthy, but um, essentially there's a recognised methodology that you use for this. So there's pieces of research that will, so let's say we were looking at uh, social isolation for older people. It's not real, it's true. It is, but there's a strong methodology behind it. It's not, it's not my methodology, by the way. It's a methodology that's used internationally to determine. So it puts um, a figure on, an, on what we call an outcome. So, you know, if someone's health improves, how much can you calculate that by? And then you turn that into a cost that you can then value. I can, you, I'm just I, can, I can talk to you afterwards if you like. In anything okay. where you can get a return of 160%. <laughs> It's, it's, it's the like social it's return, amazing, it's not the cash. It's, it's an amazing not. system. Um, Rachel you should tell the Mike it. Sullivan would like to ask you a question. Can I just come in on that point, please, Rachel and Matthew? Every, every village, the Christmas lights in every village, yeah. they get switched on, they got switched on this year. And you couldn't get through the main road on, on Thingwall Road because there was that many people. Now, Airby, the same as, as Pensby, we've, we've um, benefited from the community funds, and Airby have. Now, that's a real plus for that community. And if you ask, all those shops were all open late. And I've never seen Wendy will, will concur, um, and David there. There was five, six hundred people at the opening of those lights. Now, that's a real value. And that can be measured in, in the terms. So one, one night changed the turnover of those shops by? No, well, I'm not so here to it's, argue. It's, it's, I, excuse me. Neither, neither I'm, I'm, uh, excuse me, I'm not here. I'm trying to excuse clarify the, chair, the point that you made. So, and if you would go through the chair, please. I beg your pardon, I'm not used to this. Thank, thank you, but you must go through the chair. But I was just trying to clarify how some of the community fund and the, and the, the elected members working with the local residents to bring real benefit to the community. Absolutely. Thanks, Chair. Um, I'm very conscious of time moving on. Um, Councillor Brightmore, do you want to make a point? I, I just wanted to get, first of all, apologies for being late, Chair. I, I can understand. get out of work. Um, I just want to make a point close to home because we're in, we're in the Pensing and Fingal Ward. We managed to get benches installed in Ridgewood Park by virtue of some of the um, community funding that's been mentioned tonight. Now, prior to us getting that funding, there was nowhere for anyone to sit and have a picnic when you were taking their kids to the play area, going to the Hope Centre or playing football on the pitch. We've seen an increase of people coming for that reason. So that's another example of how this money, small amount of money, has tangibly increased the benefit of the already existing public spaces. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's really valuable to have some on-the-ground examples. Um, I am conscious of time and in my role as chair... Um... Sorry, Wendy. <laughs> I, I think because I saw... Uh, Step at the back, they put a hand up before any councillors. So okay, well, let's let step up and go and then we'll move on if that's okay. I don't want to be negative, but. Oh, I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> Changed your mind now. Yeah. I've been committed to these meetings for many, many years, haven't we? Um, and we seem to recall sitting through a presentation ABCD, Acid Based Community Development. Yeah. What's different about this? Why is it going to be different? Why is it working? It seems to me it's just a pat on the back for everybody for the council. Have you looked at social return investment with volunteers? 
have you valued that? And then you'll realise that the little pot of money you've got, all very good. But have you looked at the, you know, the return on investment, <coughs> the actual community people who put into it? It's huge. It's got to be. Yeah, no. You know, and that should be acknowledged really apart from just sticking the boxes for the councillors. It's both well the the social return. That's where it's so, coming from. Uh, I couldn't agree more, um, and this is not, this is, there's a separate volunteering strategy which might be of interest and I could definitely share that with you, um, it's going to the council because we need to recognise, especially, not not political point here, but especially with reduced funding, less things, a fewer things rather being done at council level, <coughs> naturally community groups are taking up the reins in certain areas and, and pulling their weight and doing wonderful things and in some cases quite innovative and brilliant things. Um, and what I've been really keen to do, because I'm also leading the volunteering review, so it sounds like maybe we need an update on that. And um, what I've been really keen to do is make make sure that we find a way to increase volunteering, to support existing volunteers, to recognise those networks, and to understand as best we can. I'd be really keen um, to speak after the meeting about that, but to understand as best we can what different volunteers want from this, and what are the things I'm kind of most proud of in the last 12 months is a, is a policy we helped get through at the council, which gave each and every member of staff two days annual leave to donate to their community, two additional days, because actually, and it's, I feel partly linked to some of the stuff we've been talking about tonight, but if our officers are also going out and doing things in their community, there's the benefit of the community suddenly having a contact and a network, there's the benefit of an officer having an even better understanding of the communities they're serving, and there's, there's also the opportunity that that snowballs into bigger, better and greater volunteering. I do, it, there's a much longer answer about the report, Steph, and I'm, I'm really happy to stay behind and speak to you, because I, I don't want to annoy the chair any longer. So, so it incorporates some of the values of ABCD, but the thing that I, that I like about this more than I did about that, um, I always found ABCD not to be as tangible as I wanted it to be. I always thought that we needed some structures, and I think this is clearly part of a review. But so what's going to come? What's going to come out of the review? What's going to come out of the review step is specific structure. So this is not. What's not going to come out of this review is let's just go and and humble apple pie and, and ice cream. What's going to come out is is structures and, and ways forward. So that's why I think it's different. Okay. Thanks very much. One um, question, Chair. Just one very brief question. We'll, right, we'll run out of the time. We will, I promise you, I will. Mm -hmm. After I live in Upton, we have our friends of Warwick Park, we have our, we have our litter pickers, we have everything, we keep our village clean and tidy. But well, you have never once, as our councillor, consulted us on what you would like us to do or what we could do for our village. Never once. So it's all pretty fine going all around the world, but think of where your, where your priorities should lie and think a little about the people who put you in your house in the first place. Uh, I, I didn't either. Um, that's fine. Steph, I think I think we have um, managed to secure some funding for um, Warwick Park after you spoke to me about something, um, I think about a year ago now. Um, yeah, so, so we have managed to work with you on that. Um, but part of the reason of coming um, to these meetings and telling everyone about things now is so that people have additional opportunities to engage. I'm really keen to know what our various residence groups think. And that's why we've had uh, the ongoing consultation um, existing and uh, continued this evening. Thank okay. you. Thanks very much. And I'm sure people can get in touch with you yeah. and uh, share their views with you. We're going to move on though now yeah, to item number five. I've had my hand up for a long time. And I want to ask, we'll what involvement does the youth element of our communities have in this? And why are, do we not have any youth members on our constituency committee? to put forward their points of view. This is a very much an older group here this evening, and I would like to see...